Wow, wow, wow. God is so good. God is so good. Well, if you're here, if you're online, if you can sit down, go ahead. If you can't sit down, stay standing up. I can't sit down, so I'm going I'm to remain standing up. I'm too excited. I'm telling you, God is good. You know, you feel that on the inside of you that, that you want to give more to God. Like you almost, like there's something inside of you that just wants to shout louder, that wants to raise your hand higher, that wants to sing from a deeper place. <laughs> this is what God means when, when he says that when we follow Jesus, that it's going to be like a, like a, a whale that's on the inside of you that is springing up and is giving you life. This is what it means when Jesus says that when you follow him, you may go through dark times, but you'll never walk in darkness because he will always be the light of life in you. This is, this is what it means when Jesus says that, that wide is the road that leads to destruction and, and many are on it. He says, but narrow is the road that, that leads to a Zoe life. You know what that word means, my friends? It means a, a God kind of life. See, Jesus came to give us so much, so, so much. You know, sometimes I, it, it, it saddens my heart when people are afraid to get close to God. When people think that, oh, I don't want to get close to God because then that means I, I can't do this or I can't do that. Oh, you don't realize what you're missing. There is so much more that you're going to gain than you'll ever lose by following Christ. But you got to come and taste. You know, the, the, the scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, you got to draw near to him. And you'll see how good he really is. Amen. I'm just so glad that you guys are here tonight. So glad that you guys tuned in online. And just thank you guys so much for coming together to, to worship God. You know, he, he, he deserves everything that, that we can bring to him. And, and if it's coming out on a good Friday night or tuning in, whether you're in your car, whether you're in your home, whether you're at work on a little break just to worship God, he, he is worthy of it. Amen. He's worthy of it. Well, listen, I just, I just have a, a few thoughts to share with you guys here tonight. I know I've already shared a lot, but just a little bit. But, but I do want to ask you, have you ever thought about why this day is called Good Friday? Have you ever, like, just, just reflected on that for a little bit? Because just think about it. It was anything but good for Christ, Right? I mean, think about it. He was insulted. He was mocked. He was beaten so severely, he was almost unrecognizable. And yet, it's called Good Friday. Do you know why, my friends? Because although it was, it was bad on Christ in that moment, it resulted in very good for us. I want to read this passage to you in Matthew chapter 27 as, as it describes this moment because this is, this is the night, this is the day that, that we celebrate that Christ willingly went to that cross. He, he didn't go, he, he wasn't forced there, you know. Pe man didn't put him there. As a matter of fact, when, when they came looking for him and, and, and they brought him, you know, they, when they came looking for him, you know, Judas, you know, betrayed him and gave him the kiss of death that is called, and, and, uh, and they arrest him, and, and Peter rises up, and he lifts up his sword, and he tries to, to fight him off, and, and Jesus says to Peter, no, Peter, don't, it's okay, put that down, put that sword down. This has to be done. This has to be accomplished. And then Jesus goes, and he stands before Pontius Pilate, and, and Pilate, you know, this is the Roman governor of that time and that place, and you know, the Romans had a lot of respect and authority in the world. And so, so in a sense, Pontius has that sense of arrogance on him. And, 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 and he says to Jesus, you know, are you really a king? 
And then he says, don't you know that if you'll talk to me, I have the power to set you free? And Jesus looks at him. He said, listen, son. He said, you wouldn't have any power if it wasn't given to you from my father above. He said, if I wanted to, I could call thousands of angels to come and fight on behalf of me right now. But this has to be fulfilled. I have to accomplish something. I'm on a mission, and I've got to finish what I've come to do on that cross. But remember, it wasn't going to end on the cross, my friends, because a lot can happen in three days. And so don't forget to come back on Sunday because the story isn't over on Friday. And so, so, so listen, listen to the way this is described. Listen to this night. Listen to this moment in history. It says, then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. You see, although this was a painful day for Jesus, it resulted in good for us. His punishment, his death, his sacrifice meant good news for you and me today. But he willingly did that. You know, this is why we worship him, my friends. This is why we come to church. We don't come to church because we have to come to church. I don't come to church because I have to come to church. There was a time I went to church because I, you know, it was something like you kind of felt a conscious, like, well, I have to go to church. No, we don't, we don't come to church because we have to. We come to church, my friends, because we think about what Jesus has done for us, and it compels us. Do you know why we serve him? We don't serve him because a pastor tells us to or, or because a church tells us to or because we have to. We serve him because we want to, because we think about how he has served us, and it compels our heart to want to serve him any way that we can. You know why we give to the Lord financially? You know, sometimes people, they, they, they get surprised by how Christians give so generously to the Lord of their tithes and of their offerings. People think like, man, are you guys crazy? And you know, the way we look at it, no, you're crazy for not giving to the Lord. See, we give to him because it's the least that we can do for the Lord. It's the least that we can do. You see, our relationship with God, my friends, it's, it's not, a, it's not a have to, it's like I get to. It's not God beating us. Do this, do that, don't do that, don't do this. No, no, no. It's the Lord leading us as a good shepherd. He's guiding us. We, re we understand that Jesus came to this earth. He died on the cross for us to give us a new life, to give us a hope of eternal life, and to guide us in the life that we live in today. And that's why we follow him, and that's why we, we serve him. But, you know, in order to truly understand, to truly, to truly appreciate Good Friday, you have to understand that, that you are a sinful person. Do you know? To really appreciate and to understand Good Friday, you first have to understand that there was, there was a bad news list piled against you and me. And that list included our sinfulness. It included every sin we've ever committed in our thoughts, in our actions, in our behaviors. And that list was being held up against us. The law of God that we were trying to keep, that we couldn't keep, was looking at us in, in, in a mirror every time we looked at ourselves. We said, man, I can't do it, God. I can't keep that standard. You see... In order to truly understand and appreciate what Good Friday is, is you have to understand that you're a sinful person under condemnation. We have to understand that, that we were bound 
and enslaved by sin, and the only one that could set us free is Jesus. He's the only one. I know this to be true in my own life, my friend. Oh, for the first 20 so years of my life, I, didn't, I, I was bound by things. I was enslaved, and I didn't even know it. And Jesus set me free. It's the reason that today I'm passionate about helping others to find that freedom, because I know what God has done for me. Oftentimes, people say things like, you know, I'm not a bad person. You ever heard somebody say that? You ever heard somebody say, I'm a good person. You know, I, I help people. I said, well, that's good. That's good. You should help people. You know, people say, I'm, I'm not a bad person. I, I, I pray. You know, I go to church sometimes. And it's like, those are good things. But do you know, my friends, that your good is never enough? You see, your good enough isn't good enough. It just isn't. There isn't enough good things that we can do in order to get right with God. There isn't enough good things that we can do to, to, to enter into heaven. It doesn't work that way, my friends. You see, being a good person doesn't get you to heaven. Having a Savior does. I have to say that again. Being a good person doesn't get you to heaven. Having a Savior does. This is what keeps, this is what often keeps so many people away from a powerful, life-changing, positive relationship with God. Is that people often look at themselves in the mirror or they compare themselves to other people and they say, well, I'm not as bad as that guy. So I should be okay with God. But you see, you're comparing yourself to other people but watch, what if you compared your life to Jesus? How would that compare? Would you still look good enough? Would you still look like a good person? And the truth is, no, we wouldn't. But that's okay. That's okay, because that's what we're celebrating tonight. We're celebrating the good news that, that we, on this Good Friday, because Jesus understood that our good enough would never be good enough. He understood that doing enough good was not enough to make us right with him, but he knew that if he went to the cross and he took your sins and your sins and your sins and my sins, and if he took them to the cross, and if he paid the penalty, then you and I wouldn't have to pay that penalty anymore. Then you and I wouldn't have to live under that condemnation of, oh, man, I just, I'm just not good enough. He did it. He did it for us. Being a good person doesn't get you to heaven. Having a Savior does. See, the truth is we've all sinned, and we need a Savior. And who is that Savior, my friends? That Savior is Jesus. <laughs> Romans 6.23 says it like this. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Eternal life. Look at the comparison. Look at the contrast there. Death leads to destruction and death. I mean, sin does. But what does Jesus come and offer us? A gift of life. The day that, that Christ was crucified, there was two other men two other criminals that were crucified with him. The scripture describes how one of those men looked over to Jesus and he insulted him. He, he mocked him. He said, I, I thought you were a savior. I thought you could do all things. Why don't you save yourself and get yourself off this cross and us too? And the man on the other side looked at that man and he says, stop that nonsense. You and I are being executed today because we have done wrong. But this man is on this cross today and he has done nothing wrong. And then he looks over to Jesus and he says, Lord, he says, remember me 
when you enter into your kingdom. And Jesus looks at this man who believed. He says, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. See, one man looked at Jesus and didn't believe. Another man looked at Christ. He believed and he was saved. I believe that those two men, my friends, represent us today in the 21st century. They represent us. We go through life sometimes and we're kind of like that other man. The one who kind of looks at Jesus and doesn't really believe that he is who he said he is. And then the other man who does believe and he is saved. The question that we must all answer is which one are you? Which one are you? Are you the one that believed and is saved, or are you the one that does not? The good news is, my friends, that Christ has already done the work. Remember, he said, it is finished. It is finished. We can be like the one that believes and is saved. He's already made the way. He, Jesus, Jesus went to the cross, and he died, and he says, here is the gift. If you're willing to receive it, by faith, you can have it. I've paid the price. I've done the work. You don't have to do it. This is what is called the gospel. This is what not only saves man, but this is what changes us. I believe that right now, somebody in here and somebody watching online, online, you are hearing this message and Jesus is changing your life right now in this moment. You will never, ever be the same again. This is what the message of Christ does. What Jesus did for us by coming to this earth and shedding his blood and dying on the cross was to touch our heart, to touch our soul, to change us from within. It doesn't mean we become perfect individuals. No, 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 no. We all know that, right? If you're married today, you, your spouse can look at you and say, oh, no, no, he ain't perfect. <laughs> Far from it. If you're the husband, don't look at her and say the same thing. But just say, you're close to perfect, babe. You're close. It doesn't mean that when we come to faith in Christ that we're perfect. It doesn't mean that we'll never sin again. It doesn't mean that we'll never mess up again. No, but what it does mean, my friends, is that we have been justified. We have been made in right standing with God because we've placed our faith upon Christ. We are forgiven yesterday's sins, today's, and tomorrow's. And so I want to close by giving all of us just a moment to to respond to Christ. Like I said, I, I know there are some of you here today and some of you watching online who, who, who you know. I mean, you're a believer and you know this. You have Christ in your heart and, 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 and a service like tonight, uh, uh, tuning in like tonight, what it does for you is, is it inspires you. It, it encourages you. The reason you, you, you're here tonight, the reason you're tuning in online is because you know what Christ has done for you and you just want to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done for me. And you also want to say to the Lord, Lord, I'm here. I can't do it without you. I can't do it without you. I need you. Oh, I can tell you, my friends, I cannot follow Jesus without his help. I need him. I need him every single day. We need him. But then I know there are some of you here tonight and some of you watching online who you don't know Jesus yet. You haven't invited him into your heart. But today's your day. The scripture says that, that when you hear the message, don't put it off for tomorrow because tomorrow may not come. When you hear the message, let this be the day of your salvation. Let this be the day that you receive what Christ has accomplished for you. Think about his goodness. God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us. 
We didn't have to do something to receive it. He did it before we could even do anything. So let's take a moment right now. Right where you're at, just right here. Just close your eyes. Just bow your head. You can join in, in per- online as well. If you're here today, and your, your prayer today is, Lord, I'm with you. You're with me. Help me to stay with you. Continue to help me to be the man and the woman you've created me to be. Let's pray that together. And if you're here tonight, or you're watching online, and, and you say, I want to know Jesus. You can open up your heart to him right now. Let's all pray this prayer of faith together. Just say this with me. Say, Lord God, tonight, on this Good Friday, I invite Jesus into my heart. I receive him as my Savior and Lord. Jesus, today, I commit my life to you. Now help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, friends, two things. Maybe tonight you've just made a, 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 a you've renewed your commitment to Christ. You just said, man, Lord, I, I'm, I'm going to take this relationship to another level. Congratulations. Great decision. Maybe today you've made a first-time decision for Christ, first time that you've invited Jesus into your life. The Bible says this is a new day. This is a new beginning. Old things are gone, new things are coming. I want to invite, I want to, I want to, I want to encourage you to, to, you know, send a text to that number on the screen. I want to send you a free gift to help you in your new commitment to God. And then I want to ask you to, each one of us, to keep tuning in, whether you're tuning in online or whether you're coming out in person, Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. I know we're all going through tough times right now. Challenging, uncertain times. But listen, Jesus never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's plans for you were good pre-pandemic, in the midst of the pandemic, and they're still going to be good for you after the pandemic. And so, again, tonight is is Friday, but a lot can happen in three days. A lot can happen in three days. And so, we're going to reconvene again on Sunday. I want to invite you to join us again this Easter Sunday. Got just another message, another time of of just a time in worship and just time to celebrate what Christ has done. I want to encourage you to invite somebody to join you this coming Sunday. Just watch what God is going to do in your life and what God is doing around the world this Easter weekend. And so again, my friends, I want to thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining us here uh, in person on this Good Friday service. Thank you so much for tuning in online. And I cannot wait to worship with you again this coming Sunday. God bless you guys. Y'all have a great night.